Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let me, uh, let me go through this step by step for you, okay? Wendy, can you do me a favor and just make sure you have a pencil in and just writing this down just step by step. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand. I'll be more than happy to, to answer what your questions, okay? So the first thing that we wanna do, ladies and gentlemen, when we complete the square, the reason why we're completing the square is a lot of times when we're trying to solve, right? When we practice on solving, the first thing I've always told you guys to do is try to solve by factoring, right? Factor, factor, factor. We've practiced factoring over and over. But you look at this problem, this is not factorable. There's no two numbers that multiply to give you seven that add to give you 16. So what, how else can you solve this problem? How else can you find the values of seven, uh, for x, I'm sorry. You can do that by completing the square or by what we just learned, uh, quadratic formula. Those are two now ways you can do that if it's not factorable. So what exactly is completing the square? Well, let me go back. Let's review with factoring for a second. Um, this is what we call a perfect square trinomial. x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. That's the formal definition of a perfect square trinomial. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, here's two examples. Here's two examples of two perfect square trinomials. All right? Now, why are perfect square trinomials so cool or so helpful for us? The reason why they're helpful for us is because these are very easily factorable. All right? Because what we notice is, look at a squared is 9. And then 2 times a would be a squared is 9, so therefore a is 3. You can see the middle term is 2 times 3, which is 6. Here, a is 3. And here, you could also have it as um, negative, or 2 times negative a would also work. But the reason why these are so important is because when you, these are factorable. Perfect square trinomials are factorable. And the way they're factorable is you could write this as, sorry, not a, x plus, uh, x plus 3 squared and x minus 3 squared. All right, that's how you can factor them into there. All right, so it's really helpful to use these because they're factorable. And not even factorable, but they're factorable to what we call a perfect square. All right, a number, a binomial multiplied by itself. So what we're going to do when completing the square, our whole idea about completing the square is to create a perfect square trinomial. So first thing we're going to do is get our variables onto the same side. So we have x squared plus 16x equals 7. Now, how do we create a perfect square trinomial? So what I have here is I got my variables all on the same side. Now, how am I going to create a perfect square trinomial? Well, think about it. It's x squared, which we have. You have to have the x squared. You can't have, you can't have a variable in front, right? We practiced, I showed you guys how to factor that out. Then we have 2 times a. So how can you represent 16 as 2 times a? So if 16 equals 2 times a, what does a equal? 8, right? And that's where this whole 16 divided by 2 squared comes from, because if if a is 8, then if, so we got a is 8, then what do we do to create a perfect square trinomial? <coughs> what do you do? What do you do with the a? Square you square it. So, and then 8 squared is 64. Does that make sense on kind of what I did? No? Sure. So I need to create a perfect square trinomial. This is what I'm given so far. I just got my constant to the other side. Huh? This, this is a binomial. But what I want to do is I want to create a perfect square trinomial. Okay? So I have a trinomial. I, have cur I want a trinomial. I have a binomial. Okay? So to go from here to here, notice the integer, the coefficient of your middle term is 2a. Well, I have 16. So you could say 16 equals 2a. That means a equals 8. Right? Right? Then I need to figure out this third term. What is this third term? Well, that third term is a squared. Well, what's 8 squared? Because a is our 8. What's 8 squared? 64. The other way I taught it was what we taught before was b divided by 2 squared. Yeah, then that's fine. b over 2 squared. You remember it? Do it. So then you add it to both sides. x squared <laughs> plus 16x plus 64. equals 7 plus 64. Make sure you add 
to 64 on both sides of your equation. All right? So now, ladies and gentlemen, I've created a perfect square. I've done everything I needed to do to create a perfect square. And again, why are perfect squares so helpful? Because once you have a perfect square format, they're easily factored. You can easily factor them. You don't need to say, you don't need to do the A times B and the diamond method and factor by grouping. Once you have a perfect square trinomial, you got it factored. Now, sometimes they're a little bit hard. So easy way to remember them is just to do x plus b divided by 2. So, well, b divided by 2 in my case is 8. So that means this can be written as x plus 8 squared equals 71. So now when you're looking at it, you say, all right, can I solve an equation like this? Yeah, this is easy now to solve because now all you need to do is do inverse operations. You don't need to try to factor anymore. All you need to do is do inverse operations. So right now, what's happening to the x? It's being added by 8, and it's being squared. So we've got to undo the squaring first. So you take the square root of both sides. So you get x plus 8 equals the square root of 71. Remember, when you introduce the square root, it's plus or minus. Then I subtract the 8, and I get x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 71. And there you go. Any preguntas? Yes. All right, do you understand how I go from here to here? No, Okay. So what you need to understand is you need to just understand your factoring. x squared plus 4x plus 4 can be broken down into x plus 2 times x plus 2, which is x plus 2 squared. Understand? That's for 4x, right? That's for this one, yep. Right. That makes sense? Yeah. Factored. So all I, that's all I'm doing. x um, plus 10x plus 25. These are all perfect square trinomials. They're all the same. All right, let's do a minus one. Minus x minus 5 times x minus 5. x minus 5 squared. So that's all I'm doing from here. I get to there. Because I know I, don't, I just didn't write x plus 8 times x plus 8. But it's the same thing. You're getting over and over and over again. If you want a helpful trick on how, to, how it will always work, is just do this. It's always x plus b divided by 2 squared. You can always just take whatever your b divided by 2 was and then just plug that in. And you can always get that answer as well. That's just another way to think about it. OK? All right, there you go. So 